Hello students, I hope you are good. Today we are going to discuss uh, our last topic that is payout policy, dividend payout policy. So before starting this chapter, let's uh, understand why are we studying this topic. Okay, as you can see from the income statement, in the income statement we learn that we have some sales, then we subtract our CGS to get gross profit, right? and then we uh, we subtract operating expenses to get operating profit that is called ebit then we subtract uh, financing expense in the form of interest then we have we have ebt then tax then we get eat so eat is your net income so when we reach at eat then there is a decision that uh, board of directors have to make and this decision is not made by uh, finance manager this decision is uh, approved by uh, the, the proposal is uh, of course made by the managers but final approval is by board of directors so at this stage board of directors they decide whether they should do the payout I mean this is the first form right whether they should distribute this uh, profit or the cash flow right should they distribute it in the form of payout or the second decision is should they retain okay so in this first form they are going to pay or distribute the profit right so we will call it as dividend distribution decision and in this case it is retention decision okay so this is at the first stage that we have to decide whether distribute or retain when we retain it is called retained earning it means we are not paying anything or there could be a situation there are normally situations that how much should the company pay that is actually a third thing right so how much should company do one and how much company should do two right so this could be a uh, third situation number one uh, the company needs to decide whether to pay or to retain or in case company wants to do both so company has to decide how much should be the payout and how much should be the retention okay so let's see first we have payout when we when the companies are doing payout they have to decide how much how much of this cash flow should be distributed okay so how much of this cash flow should be distributed number one number two is when to distribute that it means should the company distribute it quarterly should the company distribute it annually when okay what should be the frequency of distribution in it means frequency of distribution of this profit okay and the third is okay we have decided the distribution next is in which form what is the form of the dividend that we should pay should we pay it in the cash form okay versus should we pay it should we do the repurchase right or we can do cash dividend as well as repurchase so it's up to the company but these are the two major extremes of paying the dividends number one cash dividend number two repurchase okay repurchase the existing shares is also a dividend distribution method okay so please remember this thing when the company is deciding in which form the company should decide should they distribute it in the cash form or should they buy some shares okay the second extreme when we looked at that it's retention retention means company is not is keeping some retained earning or company is not paying any dividend it is totally it is totally retaining all this cash flow right so this is the use of cash flow in retention so we are retaining it okay or maybe some part of the dividend is being paid so we are again retaining it so when the companies they they retain what is the purpose companies normally retain for the future investment 
okay normally the new companies or the growing company they do more retention so they when companies uh, what is the benefit for the shareholder then in this case shareholders will receive some cash dividend in this in this case they will also receive some stocks right so a stockholder this dividend this stockholder for instance if it has one share when the company is uh, uh, repurchasing the shares its worth of the share would increase right so that is <clears throat> a one form but when we retain what happens companies do the investment when the companies make investment assets increase when the assets increase wealth of the company increase and when we say wealth of the company it is also the wealth of the shareholders right so when the wealth of the company increases it means the wealth of the shareholder increases which in other mean their share price would increase okay so when the share price increase what do we call them what we call it as we call it as capital gain okay so there are two major discussions coming from this lecture first discussion that we will see is uh, is cash dividend it means we are paying that okay once we have paid that the discussion should be cash dividend versus repurchase which one is has more effect on the share price number two is payout versus retention these are two major topics okay there are subtopics as well but these are under these two themes payout versus retention okay so we need to look at whether basically the question would be here we are the shareholders here are the shareholders the question would be whether cash dividend whether share, whether cash dividend or share repurchase would help the shareholders number 1 okay it means should we go for only cash dividend would it help the shareholders or share repurchase is a good thing for shareholder this is one decision okay next is whether paying dividend paying dividend will take two forms right cash dividend or repurchase okay so whether paying dividend or not paying dividend would help shareholders so these are two major major discussion that we we will be covering in this chapter <clears throat> so you need to understand what is the theme of this topic okay so let's take a bigger picture so we have some cash flows here so how to use that cash flow BODs decide okay so when the BODs decide first decision is should they pay or retain so this is versus okay so this is one discussion as you can see it here okay next is okay we have decided to pay how much to pay when to pay and what form when we say what form we have cash dividend versus share repurchase then it's another discussion okay so two major themes coming from uh, this discussion and we will cover that today okay okay please uh, remember one more thing all the topics that we have discussed so far in last topic we discussed the effect of capital structure and in the capital structure we learned Miller and Modigliani theories the purpose, was, the purpose was to understand whether changing the capital structure maximize shareholders wealth right and when we say shareholders wealth it means their price okay so it means we need to see whether changing the capital structure has any different effect on the price of the stock okay number one investment of course we need to see the effect of investment on the price number two okay number three we need to see whether different forms of dividend or different ways of dividend uh, do they have any effect on shareholders wealth or price so ultimately we are actually looking at the at the relationship between any decision any decision versus price okay we are actually looking at the effect of any decision that we are making on the price okay so capital structure is a decision investment and dividend decision 
so we will see whether this decision has any impact on the price okay and when we see the price we have a price here and we can affect the price or we can change the price when the denominator normally changes so we will see if we have any effect on re when re changes then price also changes okay so ultimately any decision that we are making we have to look at whether that decision has any impact on the price or not okay so let's see that okay now start we start our lecture formally okay this is the outline of today's uh, topic first we are going to discuss a bigger picture that I just discussed then we have dividends versus share repurchase so it means it's a payout decision number one first discussion I will call it as first discussion then we have dividends versus sh share repurchase in capital market so this is also part of this discussion <clears throat> so in this first discussion we are going to look at these four topics okay so mainly they, we have these two topics then we have some extension okay first to understand what is dividend what is share repurchase then we will see dividend versus okay first we need to understand dividend share repurchase then versus in perfect capital market then we have we have to have uh, uh, a discussion on the impact of taxes on the payout policy and then signaling <clears throat> after that this is a second discussion payout versus retention right and this is second discussion that we are going to discuss today and then that last is advice for the finance manager that we need to see okay so I hope you understood this uh, outline okay so they, they have started directly from the free cash flow I started from the sales and all this process to reach free cash flow so first decision is to pay out or retain okay so this is first decision and when we pay out we need to decide whether dividends or share repurchase okay or this is also another decision or if we retain then we need to see do we need to invest in the new projects when we invest it means the capital gain would increase and then sometime we need some cash reserves to to tackle some unwanted situation in the economy so we also do that okay but normally when the companies do they when they retain it the purpose solely is largely is to increase the capital gain okay we just discussed this uh, map okay as we just discussed we first decision is to pay out okay when we say pay out we have two things dividend as well as uh, repurchase first is payout cash dividend a payout policy involves how much and when to pay I discuss with you quarterly or what it should be the frequency and what form does the payout take place and as we know the earnings they belong to shareholders but not all earnings are paid out to the shareholders like I just discussed uh, when we have EBIT then interest and then EBT then tax and whatever is the earning here this this earning belongs to all shareholders okay but this is not that not all earnings are normally paid to shareholders some we retain it right and some we pay some we pay in the form of dividend and some we retain it okay so this is the purpose of this this line so retained profits are used for reinvestment I discussed that shareholders might be willing to forgo under current dividend in exchange for future capital gain so it means if you are not paying dividend shareholders would be very happy if we can increase their because we are not paying any dividend so we are all retaining it so shareholders should know that we will be using the company would be using this fund 
for the reinvestment or the investment so that their asset increase and their capital gain increases okay so this is this line and the driver of this decision is whether the firm could employ the cash flow better than its investors of course uh, company would use these funds properly if if the company is able to use these funds properly then it would of course increase the capital gain okay so in a sense the payout financing and investment decisions are uh, are uh, closely linked of course they are closely linked so when the company retains something it may invest right and also uh, the, if the company has equity so equity or debt mixture of equity and debt is actually decided by the financing decision so pay or payout are made from after tax earnings and deter and is determined by the board of directors so after we pay tax here you see when we pay tax here from earning before tax then this earning is available for the equity holders so that is what it meant so and is determined by the board of directors we discussed that already okay first form of the dividend payout is dividends the company may pay the dividend in the form of cash number one or it can also uh, give stock as dividend okay so when I say last time I actually forgot to explain that when you say pay dividend so it could be uh, the, pay, the cash flow can be used for the dividends and when I say dividend it could be cash dividend or stock dividend okay and then we can use it for uh, uh, share repurchase that is another part okay so this cash stock dividend is part of dividend okay not share repurchase so company can pay dollar two dollar one in the form of dividend it could be regular dividend mean paid after every quarter special dividend mean one time dividend that is not only larger than this regular dividend a year okay liquidating dividend the final dividend when the company is liquidating for instance company is making losses now the company is bankrupt and company is liquidating so whatever is uh, uh, payable to the equity holders is considered to be the liquidating dividends okay so at the time of liquidation whatever company pays as a dividend is called liquidating dividends normally company pays these regular dividends okay stock dividend is we are not paying them dollar one or dollar two so we are paying them stock dividend for instance this individual has one stock has one stock already what the company is doing company is not paying them cash company wants to use the cash instead company gives them one more stock okay so when previously he has one stock now the now this shareholder is not receiving dollar two instead he is receiving this stock so he has now two stock okay so if he want cash he can sell this sell this uh, stock to get cash right but if he wants to keep it he can increase the capital gain okay so giving stock is also another form of dividend so it means he can liquidate this stock to get some cash so investor receives stocks instead of cash as dividends so for instance a 5% dividend means that a shareholder will receive 5 additional shares for every 100 uh, stocks he owns right so for instance this one he has 100 if it is 5% dividend he will receive 5 more shares so he will receive 5 extra shares so if you want to sell he can sell no problem so this is one form of dividend that is actually dividend in the form of cash dividend and stock dividend okay please remember that for now we are just understanding dividends and then share repurchase after that we will see their effect on share price okay first when we are actually understanding each component now when we are saying dividends there are four special dates that you need to remember that is declaration date ex dividend date record date and payable date okay declaration date is the date at which the company board of directors authorizes the company to pay dividends so now their company is able to 
announce the dividends okay so this is our declaration date it means that uh, dividends are approved for instance board declares that a special dividend of dollar three per share on this day so that is a declaration date after that x dividend date it's a date on or after which anyone buying the stock will not be eligible for the dividend so it means after november 15 or on november 15 before that anyone who has the company share he will receive dividend right but anyone on this day who has bought the stock of the company or after this day is not going to receive any dividend right so that's called x dividend date mean if an investor buys a stock on or after this date he is not going to receive the dividend that the company has declared before this date whoever has the dividend whoever has the stock will receive the dividend okay then there is a record date or date which follows the x dividend date like like after two days 15 to 17 you can see that on which an investor must be a shareholder of record in order to receive the dividends so this is actually a last this is a date at which the company sees how many shareholders are there so they are in the record so these people will receive the dividends and payable date is the date at which it is actually paid okay so these four dates that you have to remember that for instance uh, normally this divid this date is really really important if you are investing in a stock and you see that uh, x dividend date has passed so you cannot expect that actually dividend okay so so there are two people here let me explain there are two people here i have i have this share okay so this is he, he is going to buy that share but he has already he has already received that dividend so when he is going to buy this stock he is not, he is not going to get that dividend okay so because he has bought after x date or on x date dividend dividend date okay we have learned what is dividend now we are learning in dividend please remember these two things when we say dividends cash dividend or stock dividend now we are looking at the second part that is share repurchase so share repurchase is also a form of dividend payout but in that a share is actually purchased by the company okay so the company buys back the shares of the company okay and the company can buy back its own shares in following ways okay open market simply company can buy from the open market or the stock market like other investors do then we have a tender offer where company actually announces an offer to all existing uh, security holders to buy back a specific amount of outstanding securities at pre-specified price over short time period okay so okay let me explain it like that uh, this is a company okay so company actually wants to buy back because company has some cash flow now company wants to utilize this cash flow to buy back its share previously let's say company has uh, n is equal to 1 million shares okay so they are traded in the market now company is thinking that uh, i i should use this cash flow to buy back some shares okay so first approach is company can get it from the capital market okay on the existing price whatever is the price on the on the day of purchase company will buy that okay number two is the tender company will announce it in a tender and in that tender the price should be specified so those who want to sell to the company at this price they would sell it okay last is targeted repurchase in the targeted repurchase company wants doesn't want uh, from the camp, uh, company uh, company actually buys the stock from specific shareholders for instance this is a shareholder who has some 10 percent of the company stock okay so the company may be buying the stock uh, from the investor who has more than 10 percent stock so these are actually targeted so the company is not targeting anyone 
who has maybe one person or two person maybe the company is targeting anyone who has more than 10 percent of company stock so this is a targeted repurchase okay so this is uh, a second form of uh, dividend distribution that is share the purchase okay but the question is why do company do share repurchase how it helps equity holders okay what is the benefit of share repurchase for the equity holders normally when company thinks that maybe he has the excess cash and there is no investment and there are 1 million share outstanding in the market and the price of the share is let's say is 100 right so company is thinking maybe their stock is undervalued right so it means the market people are not really uh, treating the share treating the stock of the company really well so company would buy let's say half of that okay so company is going to buy 0 0.5 million so how many would be left in the market now 0 0.5 million so so when there is uh, less supply in the of the stock in the, in the stock market of course its price would increase so sometimes company thinks that there is mispricing okay so mispricing of its stock in the stock market then company normally do the share repurchase so who those people who actually are holding that okay uh, holding the share of the company their price would their share price would increase okay so we have learned what are the dividends and what are the uh, four dates of dividends and now we have, we have learned what is share repurchase let's see what do we have next okay we have an example uh, no we are now actually doing a decision between dividends versus share repurchase in a perfect capital market okay so first discussion we have started now okay previously individual now we are actually uh, uh, doing it together now we take three situations first situation is uh, assume general has 20 million in excess cash and has no debt so this company is an unlever form so it meaning that whatever would be the cash flow would be distributed to shareholders okay uh, the firm expects to generate additional free cash flow of 48 million per year in subsequent years uh, the company unlevered cost of capital is 12 percent so it means the company is expecting that next year from coming years whatever would be uh, what would be the cash flows 48 million okay every year there would be a cash flow of 48 million so company right now has 20 million excess cash and expectation is that it will generate 48 million uh, as an excess uh, sorry as a cash flow as we know that uh, the price price of anything we know that is the present value of future cash flows okay and uh, when we have a company we know that uh, future cash flow is 48 20 million is not a future cash flow it is current cash flow that the company has okay so let's see what is the enterprise value of its ongoing operation mean the what is the value of the company so it is value of the company is 48 million cash flow divided by cost of capital it's equal to 400 billion okay so this is the value of the company and I told you because it's a company so we are not doing uh, 1 plus R okay because uh, it's an inf it's a perpetuity company means when we do the valuation for the company uh, there is no n n is equal to infinity so that's why in the denominator we don't do one plus but if it is a project so we would do uh, cash flow divided by one plus r because it's a company it's infinity we will just use r okay remember the formula of price is equal to d divided by r minus g if there is no growth it would be d 
it would be R. So if cash flow is in the form of total cash flow, it would be CF divided by R. So it is actually the total value of the company. Okay. So this is the uh, present value of the future cash flow. This is the value of the company. Okay. Including its cash, what is gen, uh, the company's total market value? So this is uh, this is 400 million coming from the cash flows plus currently company has 20 million so what is the current total market value of this company is 420 million so this is called market value of the company now <coughs> uh, all the things are same so part c is uh, the company's board is meeting to decide how to pay out its current excess cash that is 20 million to shareholders okay this is a question how to pay that and I told you when the company decides how to pay that mean company had decided to pay it actually so it could be in the form of dividend or share repurchase okay so <clears throat> the board is considering two options number one use the 20 million to pay a dollar two cash uh, for each of 10 million share outstanding so total number of share of the company are 10 million and the cash that the company currently has is dollar 20 million right so what would be the dividend per share dps would be equal to 20 million divided by 10 it would be equal to dollar 2 okay so this is the first decision that the company wants to pay dollar 2 as a dividend or repurchase shares instead of paying dividend so the company is going to pay not pay dividend instead it is going to opt for share repurchase then there is a third condition also we will discuss it later but for now we are having only these two conditions so the now the question is how will each alternative policy affect the share price I told you that whatever would be the decision ultimately we are going to look at how is it going to affect the price okay so let's see if company pays dividend what happens to the price if company do does share repurchase what should be the uh, price okay first policy is pay dividend this is alternative policy number one okay pay dividends with excess cash mean 20 million because the firm expects to generate future free cash flow of 48 million per year it anticipates paying a dividend of 4.80 per year each year thereafter okay so it means after this two as a dividend later on how how much would be the dividend it would be of course 48 million right uh, so we would be distributing rest of the cash flows after they paying this dividend okay so after paying this dividend every cash flow would be 48 million right so this is this would be distributed as a dividend so let's find what is the share price before the x dividend date okay let's say this is a date here so let's say this is the x dividend date after that this is x dividend date after this there will be no dollar two but before this dollar two is already announced okay so if i'm here after on or after x date so the price would be i can only claim this part of the cash flow mean 48 but before that i have two okay so so p come p come means uh, x dividend uh, p come means this dividend current dividend plus whatever i will receive after that if i have this share if i keep this my claim would be on 48 okay so i will receive this dollar 2 plus 4.80 divided by 0 0.2 so this is actually total cash flow divided by r okay so it's equal to dollar 2 plus 40 is equal to 42 so please note that this 4.8 would be x right x dividend x dividend how do i get it 48 million divided by 48 million divided by 10 million so after this dividend company will pay 4.8 afterward okay so this is current and this is expected 
this is expected okay so this is what this is the share price okay so what's the formula for the share price price is equal to d divided by r d is always an expected date but if the company is paying current dividend plus expected date so it would be the price okay but this is price come mean before if i am here okay so this would be the price so the price is dollar two plus 4.8 expected dividend divided by cost of equity so it would be 42 the price would be 42 but what happens after this dollar two is paid now what would be the share price after that so it means after paying this dividend what would be the price so it would be price x price x mean after x date is equal to 4.8 is the dividend okay divided by 0 0.12 is equal to 40 please remember this this is equal to d divided by r we are not using r minus g because there is no growth so this is just r so the answer is 40 okay students what is the takeaway please remember that uh, if there are two prices if you are on this area it would be cumulative price and if you are in, in this area it would be expected price because the company is expecting 48 million as a cash flow so this would be distributed to all of that distribute would be distributed to the shareholders because it is an unlevered form right so it would be 4.8 after that in this region dividend would be 4.8 in this region it is just dollar 2 right so if i ask you what is the price this is how you would get it so this part is called the present value of future cash flows okay and when it would be paid so the new shareholders or after getting this dollar two I, I cannot claim this dollar two so it would be this one so the price actually drops from 42 to dollar four with the amount of the dividend that i would receive before x dividend day okay so because of course i i have already received a benefit so one benefit is already received so remaining benefits are uh, is just 4.8 so of course this benefit will not be will no longer be there so benefits are decreased so the price would also decrease so this is just the summary of this uh, the, the previous part that the share price will drop on the x dividend date from 42 to dollar uh, to 40 with an amount of what amount of dividend okay okay the amount of the share price is equal to the amount of current dividend dollar two so this is the summary company had uh, mean before uh, before uh, december 11 is before uh, paying the dividend or before x dividend date so 20 million company had other assets were 400 how did we get it it was actually cf divided by uh, zero the cf divided by r so this was total market value of the company and total number of shares are 10 million so total market value divided by uh, share outstanding would be the share price okay so so if i ask you what is the market value share price you can calculate the share price using two ways number one market value divided by share outstanding is equal to 420 divided by 10 answer would be 42 okay but this is before the before x x date another way is is equal to dividend plus dividend expected so i would write e into r so the answer would be same dollar 2 4.8 divided by 0. 1 2 answer would be 42 okay so this is this is the cumulative price okay so what is the x x means this is already uh, paid so the total asset is 400 okay so after x 20 is already used so the stock per share price would be what would be the market value because in the market value we had 20 plus 400 right so 20 is no more there so the market value is equal to 400 okay so mv is equal to 
400 for the share price share price is equal to mv divided by number of shares 40 divided by 10 answer would be 4 okay so another way if i follow this formula it would be spx is equal to uh, d divided by r d is equal to 4.8 divided by 0 0.12 answer would be this is 400 sorry huh? answer would be 40 okay so you can calculate it using market value or you can follow the uh, pricing formula okay so it means share price would decrease after x okay uh, i have summarized this one for you again so that you can uh, you can remember that okay so please uh, follow this summary of what we have done market value method or pricing formula method dividend method okay and market value method and dividend method okay now the question is why would stock price drop by the same amount as dividend on the x dividend date of course anyone who purchases the share on or after the x date will not receive the dollar two right so when we are not receiving this dollar two, so it will not be a benefit. So the price of the stock is equal to the present value of future benefit. So now this is not a future benefit now, right? This is already a past benefit. The stock price should therefore drop about the amount of dividend payment on the X dividend X date since the new purchaser will have to compensate it for the fact that the upcoming cash will be made to the previous owner, okay? So the story of uh, this slide is that because we have already received this dollar two, so the shareholder after X date cannot claim this dollar two. It's already received, so the price would be equal to the present value of future benefits, and the future benefit would be 4.8 as a dividend next year. So we that's why and the price drop by the same amount that we haven't received this, but amount the. Uh, by the amount that we actually have already received okay so this drop simply reflects the difference in the value of cash flows that shareholders are entitled to receive before and after that so the, the, these statements are actually the same statement that i explained so hopefully you will understand okay we have learned that first in the first policy it was paying the dividend next policy is we are not second one is alternative policy number two it is share repurchase no dividends okay so before the share repurchase what was the value value was equal to 20 plus market value was equal to a cash plus it was equal to cash flow divided by r so it was for 20 million right remember it was 48 divided by 0 0.12 uh, so it was 420 so this is the market value and what was the price before share repurchase so we are going to use these this fund to buy back shares we cannot use this fund because this is already uh, this is going to receive in future okay so 420 divided by 10 so this was the share price before the share repurchase so this is 42 now we want to actually purchase some shares so the if i company wants to purchase the shares in the capital market so what is the market price in the capital market this is dollar 42 and how much is the excess cash company has is 20 so how ma how many shares can we buy with this dollar 20 so we need to find okay at a price of 42 so 20 million is we is the cash we have divided by this is the total price so with this 20 million excess cash we can buy 0.476 uh, million shares okay so it means company can out of 10 million company can buy back how many shares 0 0.476 so the shares would be reduced by this amount so after share repurchase what is the situation now so as you can see this in in this uh, uh, new number of shares would be 10 minus 0 0.476 new number of shares for the company are 9.52 and also what is the market value we have already consumed this 40 this 20 it's already used so how much is left 400 okay what is the share price market value divided by new share price 
sorry new uh, number of share outstanding it would be 42 per share so as you can see the share price does not change before and after the share repurchase why because uh, two things are change, changed number one this 20 million is reduced right uh, I mean this is used but it is also decreasing the denominator I mean the number of share outstanding so that's why the share price is not changing so what is the moral of the story the story is after share repurchase uh, the share price is not going to change so this is the situation here 20 cash 400 what is the market value this is the market value divided by share outstanding 42 would be the price and after share repurchase there is repurchase there is no 20 million it's already used so how much is left 400 and new number of shares would be 9.45524 what is the answer answer is 42 so uh, please remember that uh, before and after share repurchase the stock price is not going to change okay this story is different so, so why would someone prefer share repurchase the question is why does not stock price fall after share repurchase of course this is a question that is coming in our mind that 42 is not changing so what is the point of uh, share repurchase so first of all you need to understand that when the company is not paying dividend and repurchasing shares instead company is able to raise its dividend per share in the future okay the increase in future dividend compensate shareholders for the dividend they gave up today so this statement might look difficult but when we will do it you will understand why so first you need to say you need to remember that after share repurchase what happens the number of shareholders actually the number of shares they decrease right so previously 10 million so previously total cash flow was distributed to 10 million people okay but now after share repurchase this cash flow will be distributed to less people so how many 9.524 so for instance if the if the cash flow is 48 million so as you can see if we divide this 48 million to 10 million so how many how much each shareholder would receive it is 4.8 so if we distribute this to 9.5 to 4 shareholders so they would be getting more because it would be distributed to less people it would be distributed to uh, more shareholders so it would be 5.04 okay so that's why when the company is not paying dividend and instead it's repurchasing shares so it is actually in other words it is increasing the future dividend of the shareholders okay can you see that so we will look at it here also so 48 million is the free cash flow because this company is unlevered so it would be distributed to the shareholders so future dividend would be 48 cash flow divided by share outstanding right 9.5 to 4 so how much would be the per share price that would be what what would be the uh, dividend per share it would be 5.04 previously if you see in the previous case what was the what was the uh, dividend per share it was actually you know it was 4.8 now and in, in share after share repurchase what is happening so let me show you here so it is 5.04 because the shareholders have not received dividend and the company has purchased the shares so the dividend would increase so it means DPS increases okay so now next is what is the share price today price as we know is always equal to the present value of future benefit so future benefit would be this dividend so DPS divided by R so price is same okay so what is the effect of share repurchase it increases actually the future dividends okay so the shareholders would be receiving higher dividends so in this slide they are summarizing what we have learned so far alternative policy number one is 
pay dividend with cash excess cash so we know that the price actually drops from 42 to 40 with the amount of dividend they have already received okay uh, okay so the x dividend price is always lower than come price okay so this is come price and this is x price okay alternative policy 2 company does not pay dividend company instead buy shares so that it has no effect on the stock price and the stock price is the same as the come dividend price save dividend were paid instead so as you can see this is equal to 42 okay so it's not changing so it is same like company has paid dividend right for instance what does this mean uh, same as the come dividend price if a dividend were paid instead so when we pay dividend dollar 2 and then this uh, 40 it was equal to 42 right so this price was called p come was equal to 42 so company did not pay this extra dollar 2 so it means company is using this fund to buy shares so it means they should be compensated for this dollar 2 right so that's why their price is not uh, the share price is not changing so they have a, it seems like they have received it it, it same like they have received uh, cash dividend okay so that's why they are receiving 42 if they are receiving 42 after dividend pay after cash share repurchase then this is value destroying this is not good sign but you might be thinking that is it really possible that uh, this increase would be of dollar two right as we just saw that 5.4 would be the dividend per share so actually we have to assume that the market is a perfect capital market okay so when there is a perfect capital market then it is true otherwise this is not true okay so the price uh, may change so perfect capital market is a market then where there is no tax there is no transaction cost there is no nothing okay now this slide is actually really important so it, it is actually the application mean it's a practical example application of the two uh, policies we learned application of the two policies first policy is would an investor prefer the dividend or repurchase its stock so this is a company decision but what about the stockholders okay so this is what company is thinking okay to decide a dividend or share repurchase but what customer what these shareholders are thinking we need to look at from their perspective okay so uh, if company issue if the company pay dividends would they prefer dividends if the company does share repurchase would they prefer share repurchase so this is actually uh, this slide is uh, telling us uh, <coughs> the story of uh, this concept okay so assume an investor holds 2000 shares of this company so we make one investor so that we understand it properly so this investor has 2000 shares of the company okay the investors holding after a dividend or share repurchase are the okay his holding or the wealth of the shareholder could be like that for instance the company pays dividend so company pay dividend is this is the dividend and on every stock company is, this investor is going to get dollar two so how much he would get get cash four thousand right and after this dividend what was the price this is x price 40 and 2 because he has 4000 2000 shares mm -hmm. so value would be 80000 so its total wealth would be 84000 so this is when company pays dividend okay so his wealth is not changing his wealth is sorry his wealth is dividend and price price is x dollar 2 and 40 and he has 2000 shares so it would be 80,000 plus uh, 4000 so it would be 84,000 okay and uh, next is repurchase 
so he has uh, 2000 shares and what is the what is the share price what is the share price of uh, the stock now it is dollar 42 because it does not change so the answer would be 84000 no you might be thinking sir because uh, it is uh, the shares after share repurchase, repurchase his shares should, should decrease no no because he did not sell it maybe other people have sold it he has kept his portfolio of dollar uh, or 2000 shares he has not sold the his own share so he is uh, he would be valuing according to his own wealth okay so when the company buys back the shares so it does not mean that he has sold his shares as well everybody has to sell the shares no 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 it's not the case he has 2000 shares so and the price is 42 so the wealth is not going to change so as you can see here whether the company pays dividend the wealth is same for the shareholders when the company repurchase shares his wealth is still the same so the wealth of the shareholder is not changing okay so after that there would be some other uh, concept related to this let's see okay now that is the preference now we are we are looking at the preference of the shareholders so the question is what if the firm repurchases shares but investor wants cash okay so investor wants dividend this is a story here sorry actually i need to draw it again and again so that the students who have some who are slow learner just for them okay so let's say company is doing share repurchase repurchase but this investor is an investor who wants dividend okay then can the company make this uh, investor happy so let's see that so the investor would could sell shares to raise cash this is called homemade homemade dividend so for instance uh, this is a very easy case as you can see because he wants dividends but the company is paying uh, is not paying any dividend instead the company bought it bought back its on shares so what is his what's the solution for this investor he can sell for instance uh, previously he was receiving dollar two on 2000 shares he was receiving how much 4000 okay so for instance if he needs cash of 4000 because the company did not pay him cash so he wants 4000 cash so he can sell he can sell the shares because the price is not dropped to 40 so he can take the benefit right so how can he take the benefit he can he wants to have 4000 cash and what it do he can sell just 95 shares right so when he will sell 95 cash he can meet his cash requirement so what would be the uh, remaining shares it would be 1905 so 1905 into 42 so this would be his wealth remaining wealth so if company pays if the company does not pay dividend and buy back the shares that the shareholders they can sell the shares and they can get the equivalent wealth like they would have received in the form of dividend right so the company did not pay this dollar too so it can he can sell and can get 4000 okay so the the next situation is the reverse of this if the company pays dividend and the investor does not want cash so so for instance company has paid dollar two on every share 2000 so company has paid how much 4000 to the shareholders but the shareholders is very happy with the shares he does not want this cash so he can use this cash to buy back shares so no problem so he will use this dividend income 4000 divided by 42 share price how, how many shares he can buy sorry it would be 40 please remember this point because when the company has paid dividend the price would drop okay so I made a mistake uh, it should be 40 okay so it would be 100 shares he can buy back 100 new shares of 40 each as a result she, he or she will hold 2100 shares worth 2100 into 40 
it is equal to 84,000 okay so what is the story of this slide if the investor wants dividend but the company is paying is not paying dividend instead it's uh, doing repurchase the investor can sell the stocks okay or in the, in the second case he can buy the stock so this is the summary of what we have learned in the in the previous two cases number one company has paid dividend plus investor investor will receive dividend plus he can buy 100 shares okay so so he will have 40 is the x dividend price new number of shares would be 2100 it's as well and the other case is company is doing the repurchase plus he can sell some shares okay so 42 price is not changing the new shares would be 1905 so this would be the wealth and how many shares uh, he had actually sold 42 into 95 he will receive this much so if you see his wealth would be 84,000 so wealth is not changing even if he if the company pays dividend and he wants shares if the company repurchase and he wants um, cash okay so please listen again if the company pays dividend but he wants shares okay company repurchase he wants cash so in either case the value of the investor portfolio is 84,000 but it is only true in the perfect capital market so what is the moral of the story moral of the story is this investor is indifferent of whatever company is thinking to do right the company if the company does share repurchase or dividend this investor is indifferent because his wealth is not changing his wealth is not changing in the cap perfect capital market it is the same okay so this is the second line uh, by reinvesting dividend or selling shares they can replicate either payout me method on their own so it means they can replicate uh, by reinvesting dividends mean once they have received dividends they can sell the dividends to buy new shares as as in this case if you see the company has paid dividend but he has bought new shares okay and in this case the company has repurchased the shares but he sold it as if he have received the dividend so this is called homemade leverage homemade leverage homemade leverage means uh, homemade uh, let me get the exact word sorry yes this is exactly the word that is also known as homemade dividend it is only happen it, it only happens when the company does the share repurchase but investor wants cash wants cash so they can uh, they can sell the shares to get some they can sell to get some cash okay so it is called homemade dividend means as if the company has paid them dividend although the company has done the share repurchase but he has sold that so it is it is as if the company has paid them dividend right so it means they can meet their cash requirements like they would have received in the form of dividend okay so they can replicate uh, the position of the company um, in in their own interest so I should change this word this is homemade dividend so homemade dividend is when company does the share repurchase but the investors want cash so investor can now sell the shares to get some cash okay so this is homemade dividend but the story is whatever is the policy of the company the shareholders wealth is not changing but it is only true in the perfect in the perfect capital market and in the perfect capital market we don't have any taxes transaction costs information asymmetry or like that now the third policy is uh, 
is an out of the way policy so it means the company then there is a third policy that is high dividend okay so there was some regular dividend that we saw in the first case but then there is high dividend and if you see here it is equity issuance okay so equity issuance and share repurchase are the reverse are opposite to each other in the share repurchase what happens company buybacks shares and the equity issue company sells shares in the share repurchase there is an outflow outflow of cash but in equity issuance there is an inflow I will write it here okay inflow of money okay so <clears throat> yeah so next is company actually wants to pay high dividends previously company had dollar 20 million so the company wanted to distribute only this much of cash but now company wants to surprise everyone and company wants to pay higher dividend so how does a company can do that and uh, how does a company actually do that and what is the effect of that on the share price so let's see that so look let's look at the third possibility the company suppose the board want, wishes to pay even a larger dividend of dollar two per share larger than dollar two per share right now okay so it's not a future dividend company wants to pay it now and for that company assumes uh, uh, assume company plans to pay how much 48 million in dividend uh, starting next year okay so dollar two if the company wants to pay lower dividend company will pay dollar two but company wants wants to pay how much 48 million as a dividend okay next year suppose the firm wants to start paying that amount today is that possible and if so will the higher dividend make shareholders better off let's see that okay at first it will look difficult but when we will explain it would be very easy no problem so because currently company has only 20 million in excess cash today so how much is the desired dividend payment dividend amount that the company wants to do as you can see is 48 so out of 48 company can can just currently has how much dollar 20 million so how much company needs extra is 28 okay so company wants 28 million extra plus this to pay 48 million dividend currently okay okay uh, additional is how much 28 million one way is to raise more cash is to borrow money or sell new shares so how can we get this 28 million there are two approaches company can borrow or company can um, ac do equity finance equity issue shares okay so this is the only way so the first case is is the equity issue so we are actually referring on this side not borrowing okay so given the current price of 42 as we know that the share price currently is 42 it is x cumulative okay the number of shares company must sell are 28 million company wants right and how many what is the price 42 so company has to issue 0 0.67 new shares okay so what would be the total shares now total would be 10 billion plus new shares is equal to 10.67 so the new number of shares would be higher so as you can see when we do share repurchase shares actually decrease but in equity issuance they will increase okay and in that case company is getting how much extra 28 so after equity issuance 
what is the situation new number of shares this is 10.67 so what is the market value now as you can see currently the market value of the company was is 4, 420 plus company has just now issued shares and company has secured how much 28 okay so so it would be uh, 448 divided by new number of shares it would be 10.667 so the answer would be dollar 42 per share so as you can see even if the company wants to pay higher dividend right still the value of the company or value of the share is not changed okay you might be wondering that why is it happening that the share price is still the same as you can see previously we had 10 million so if we will use 10 million 40 price would be 48 right but now because the company has issued new shares the shares have increased the denominator has increased when the denominator increased the price actually is the same but the question is why have we learned this part okay so why is the need for learning alternative policy 3 2 and 1 so the the story is summary is this is just to tell you that whatever way the company wants to pay dividend number one in the form of regular dividend right i would say regular number two even if the company wants to do share repurchase even if the company wants to pay higher dividends and for the higher dividend company has to borrow or company has to sell the equity in any case you can see that the price is unchanged or in other words uh, shareholder is indifferent indifferent why because in the first case he had dollar two plus 40 at the end he is going to he has received 42 and the share repurchase he got 42 in this case also he is his wealth is 42 so in any way the wealth of the shareholder is not changing so the dividend payout method has no effect has no effect as you can see on the on the on the wealth of the shareholders okay but it is only true in the perfect capital market so the wealth of the shareholder is not changed in whatever way the company wants to pay dividends okay so does it mean that uh, dividend payout method okay is irrelevant can we say that is irrelevant for the shareholders wealth because we can see that shareholders wealth is not changing so the in a perfect capital market in a perfect capital market the dividend payout policy is irrelevant okay we can see that and we will make a theory also proposition also after this slide so let's see that okay so before making this uh, miller modigliani theory uh, proposition so let's see in policy one this is uh, year zero is the dividend after that company was paying 4.8 4.8 so the wealth is 42 the wealth is 42 the wealth is 42 right so this is just the payouts okay but this part is very very important miller and modigliani in 1961 uh, let me let me see the exact date sorry yeah this is this is the exact the date okay so Miller and Modigliani have proposed they have proposed that in a perfect capital market holding fixed the investment policy of a firm so it means the investment policy of the firm is not changing okay the firm choice of dividend policy is irrelevant and does not affect the initial price as you can see okay so in other words uh, like you remember that in uh, uh, irrelevance theory of capital structure right so capital structure theory was saying that uh, debt to equity combination is not is irrelevant for the value of the firm right so this is also true that in a perfect capital market 
if we hold if we hold investment policy of the firm constant so this is very very important holding the investment policy constant you can say that whatever way the company is paying dividend is really irrelevant for the initial value of the share okay so this is called the first theory mm theory mm theory 1961 of dividend irrelevance okay so please remember that 1958 they gave also irrelevance theory on capital structure sorry irrelevance theory of capital structure right and after that they gave they gave 1961 theory relevance so things become relevant when we have taxes we have information asymmetry you remember that yeah so this is also true here so when there are no taxes it is irrelevant but after that we will add taxes so this is irrelevant theory after that we will say that market is not perfect market is not perfect mean in the market there is tax okay there is information asymmetry and then there is some um, there would be other things we will discuss okay so now we will see these parts so uh, in a perfect capital market dividend payments and stock repurchase are the perfect substitute for one another okay so it does not affect the initial value of the share but in reality this is not true preference over one method of payout than other exists due to number one there are taxes in the market okay then there is information content of these forms of payout it means in the market there is information asymmetry okay and then we have to look at the flexibility okay so you remember that there are taxation what is the information asymmetry mean the company has some info and the shareholders have some other information which party does have more information of course the company has more information about the company while the shareholders have less information okay so if the gap is higher this is case number 1 and case number 2 the information gap here is less right so in this case if you see it means the information gap between the company and the shareholder is not much so these people these shareholders have more knowledge of the company than these shareholders okay so when they have more knowledge of uh, uh, the company it means information asymmetry is less when they have less information about the company mean there is a more gap of information between company and shareholders it means there is a higher information asymmetry okay so dividends actually dividends can be used we will see that later okay dividends can be used to reduce this information gap and we will see that so now we have to adjust these market imperfections and when we include these the dividends become relevant like in capital structure okay first effect is uh, impact of taxes on the corporate policy in a payout policy shareholders must pay number 1 on the dividends they pay income tax and on the share and repurchase and purchase of stock they pay capital gain tax okay so there are two forms of tax on dividends they pay income tax and there is a capital gain tax okay so normally the income tax tax is higher than the capital gain tax for instance if you can see here personal income tax is relatively higher than this capital gain tax right as you can see here so if i will earn the money 
in in this case if you see the tax rate is really really high so the the people would prefer what the people would prefer not to get dividends they would be happy to receive the capital gains okay so but there are also economies where where the there the capital gain where the dividend tax rate is actually lower as you can see he uh, he yeah like in uae there is no income tax or there are no taxation and also there are economies where the <coughs> where the uh, dividend tax rate is actually lower so let's see if i can find the country here yeah as you can see here we have uh, here we have only capital gain tax there is no dividend tax this is i can see it from here right so it means tax rates what is the moral of this story we are not into which country has a taxation or which does not so but the story is that taxation actually affects the company to change their payout policies right so if there are higher dividend uh, income taxes then the investor would prefer to get capital gain if there are taxes are really low right then they would prefer dividends so consider taxes as the only op market imperfection the optimal dividend policy when the taxes rate exceeds the capital gain rate is to pay no dividends at all so this is actually the situation when the dividend the, when the income tax is higher so the optimal policy would be that the company the investor would require the company not to pay dividend at all because they are paying higher dividend so this is just uh, an elaboration of this graph so taxes actually they create the clientele of the people for instance there are different groups of people so i will explain it here like that it would be easy to understand so there are people there are different people who are affected by taxes so there are different types of investors actually some investors they have different investment horizon right they have they are lie in different tax jurisdiction and they have a different investment account okay so each each group of investors they may have a different need <coughs> of uh, dividends so when there are taxes taxes in the presence of taxes we can see that taxes actually create different um, uh, clientele effects for instance the old people they want steady income right they want steady income it means they want more dividends so the taxes has really little effect on them and also financial institution like pension funds pension funds mutual funds these are the funds that pay regular regular income to the investors so they would prefer what would they prefer dividend of course they would prefer dividend because they would uh, they need to pay regular cash flow to their account holders uh, um, old people they also prefer cash flow to meet their needs so that's why they would require more dividends but the individual investors who are saving uh, i mean young investors of course they would be willing to save more cash so they would not love to pay taxes instead they would prefer capital gain okay so they would do share repurchase so as you can see when there are taxes we can see different portfolios of people with different investment objectives right some people they want steady dividend income so so tax has no not really a big effect on them so they want dividends and the mutual funds pension funds they also pay regular cash flows to the account holders so in tax is not a big deal for them but small investors of course they would love to have uh, less dividend okay so individuals in the high tax brackets have a preference for the stocks 
that pay no or low dividends okay when the tax brackets are really high and when there are tax free investor and corporation have preference for the stocks with high dividend and when there are no taxes of course everybody would love to have uh, dividends okay so this clientele effect means the tax difference and tax preferences create this is the main story okay clientele effects okay so as you can see from this next slide individual investors they have a tax advantage this advantage for dividends so they would prefer share repurchase and institutions they do not prefer no tax preferences they prefer dividends actually okay and corporation tax advantages for dividend so when actually uh, okay what the story of these two slide is that tax has in a perfect in 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 reality there are taxes in the market and these taxes they create clientele okay so when there are different clientele companies they have to have is a specific uh, dividend policy to cater the needs of different clienteles okay so it means tax has an effect on the dividend policy of the company because there are different people in the market so company needs to see which which segment to target okay so for instance if the company is mature so company would be would prefer um, uh, those segment of the clientele that would really need more cash because when companies are mature actually they they don't have uh, much to uh, to grow okay so they would uh, they would love to pay uh, dividends okay so the next imperfection was market imperfection market so information asymmetry information asymmetry so when the information asymmetry is there so it means if there is a larger gap between the investors and the company when the company pays dividend okay when the companies pay dividends it sends a signal to the market participants about the future prospects of the company so when a company pays dividend please listen again it actually reduces this gap okay so it may use as a signal so can you see that signaling with the payout mean when the company pays dividend it can be used as a signal to reduce this information asymmetry okay so information asymmetry would be reduced so in so it means dividend is a way is a way of communication in other words right in a simple word communication or signal between company and and shareholders so for instance there are different companies okay there are different companies here and as an investor i am standing here i don't know which company is good or bad right so because in their annual reports they can they can manage their earnings or they can do manipulation so as an investor i don't know which one is a good company so any company who would be paying me dividend would be the company that i would trust more because dividend payment is not a fake signal okay so dividend is not a fake signal it is an actual signal because i am receiving something right and not all companies can mimic this so dividend is a very costly signal not every company can pay only profitable company can pay so this actually helps us to find out which company is good and which company is bad okay so when managers have better information than the investor regarding the future prospects of the firm their payout decision may signal this information okay so dividend signaling hypothesis says 
the idea that dividend changes reflects manager's view about the future uh, earning prospects when the company increases dividends right uh, so let me let me write it here when a company there are three situation increases dividends it may send a signal to the shareholders okay when the company reduces dividends it may again send a signal to the shareholders and when a company does not pay any dividend then it is a signal so if the company is paying more dividend it could be a signal about the future prospects future prospects mean what would happen to the company in future right future prospects future prospects mean if the company is increasing dividend it could be a signal for this investor that the company has no future investment okay okay so although it would reduce the gap but it can send a signal but let's say when the company reduces the dividend it could send a signal to this investor that the company is going to retain something because company wants to make investment okay so it actually tells the changes in dividend reflect the information of manager perspective okay what managers are actually thinking manager usually increase dividend only when they are confident that the firm will be afford to higher dividends for the foreseeable future when actually they increase right when the manager cut the dividend it may send a signal that they have lost hope that the earning will improve or in other words it can send a signal that the company is making some investment so any signal any cut or uh, increase in dividend is actually a signal okay so so it means the dividend policy is affected by information asymmetry so when there is an information asymmetry it forces the company to change its dividend policy okay so taxes taxes when there are taxes it forces the company or it affects the company to change its dividend policy based on different clientele when there is an information asymmetry it also affects the company to reduce this bridge okay so it actually affects the way how company pays dividend so when in a perfect capital market there are no information asymmetry no taxes it is not going to affect the dividend so when the dividend is affected the price would also be affected so this is again the same thing that i just described but there is a new concept that is called dividend smoothing so dividend smoothing means that companies normally maintain relatively constant dividend okay so for instance company is paying dollar 2 dollar 2 dollar 2 dollar 2 from last 5 years and if in case company pays dollar 5 in one year then it would set the expectation of the investor next time they would also expect dollar 5 but maybe company is not able to keep that right so that's why company normally smoothen the level of dividend that they can maintain right so that is called dividend smoothing so a div dividend smoothing is a way to keep the level of a dividend at a rate that could be maintained for a longer period of time so if I, if there is a sudden increase of 5 5 it would set expectation next time the investor would expect 5 not 2 right so that's why dividend smoothing is kept intentionally so that they can meet the expectation of investors okay so the 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 dividend decrease might lead to a positive rather than signal negative stock price reaction so for instance dividend 2 to dollar 1 uh may cut the dividend for instance i just told you that company might pursue some investment opportunity when the company reduces the dividend it is a signal in the market that the company is retaining because company wants to do some investment an increase of dividend may be signal of a lack of investment opportunity when the okay so this could be a uh, every increase or decrease in the dividend could be a signal increase in signal uh, shows that uh, may show that the company is profitable 
or company in other words com may think people may think that the company has no investment opportunity no growth right when decrease company is less profitable and or in other words there is an investment or there is growth in the company okay so changes in dividend should be viewed in the context of the type of the new information managers are likely to have so these these things are not actually different but uh, you need to understand that uh, that when there is information asymmetry it affects the dividends okay and uh, and it could reduce the gap between investors and market okay signaling with payout policy number one was dividend signaling theory it means when the company increases or decreases dividend it is called dividend signaling and signaling with share repurchase share repurchase is also a signal the announcement of a share repurchase is considered normally a positive signal this is true okay because manager is more inclined to repurchase share when the stock is undervalued or at its current price so let's say this is a company and uh, currently the share is trading at 40 so management thinks that hey our company is very good but why is our stock is traded at 40 it should trade at dollar 50 at least right so what does the company do they buy back the shares okay so they actually decrease the supply decrease the supply when the supply decreases the price should increase right so number one when the management thinks that there is a mispricing of its shares then it does the share repurchase so share repurchase as a form of dividend is a positive signal okay uh, <clears throat> so uh, a share repurchase is a signal that the manager believed that the stock is undervalued and difference between share repurchase and dividends managers are much less committed to share repurchase than to dividend payments normally managers are more there is a uh, dividend payments are actually more general every company is more inclined to pay dividends than the share repurchase so dividend payment is more common than share repurchase unlike with the dividends firm do not smoothen their repurchase activity of course because dividend is a regular phenomena so they can smoothen that but share repurchase no need because this is not a regular phenomena okay so when something is just once in a blue moon right then we, we don't need to manage that actually but dividend is a uh, regular thing the cost of share repurchase depends upon the market price of the stock of course uh, when we look at the market price and we, if the company thinks that it is undervalued or overvalued the company may think to buy back the shares okay so let's see the summary uh, of uh, dividend versus share repurchase dividend is uh, okay how cash is distributed to shareholders uh, in in dividends it is, it is actually paid on a per share basis like dividend per share right and shares are bought back from some shareholders participation involuntary everyone with a share receive dividend even if you don't want the company will credit your account with the dividend and it's voluntary if I want to sell I can sell the company shares if I don't want to sell I won't sell taxation for ordinary investors normally income tax but here we are more for the capital gain tax effect on share price share price drops but share price remains constant okay it is unaffected okay now before going to this big picture again so let me uh, summarize things that we have learned so far okay so this is just a brief summary of what we have learned so far so in a perfect capital market the dividends payout is irrelevant whether we pay it in the form of cash dividend or stock dividend okay we have cash as well as stock or either we we pay them in uh, or we do it we do, do it by share repurchase or if we even pay higher dividend it is not going to affect the initial value of the share but it becomes relevant when the 
market is not perfect mean then there are taxes and there are some information asymmetry so when there are taxes and if there are higher taxes it or lower taxes it would create clientele effect right so clientele effect I mean if a company is working in a in a high income tax country then people would prefer less dividend so company has to change its dividend policy to uh, meet the needs of the different clientele okay so different tax different tax uh, treatment creates different clientele so it affects the dividend policy of the firm and also dividend can be used as a signal to reduce the information asymmetry when there is information asymmetry between the market the company may use dividend as a signal to tell the people that what company is thinking and the company can signal it through way dividends and when I say dividend can increase can decrease okay not to not pay any dividend or share repurchase is just one right so the increase in dividend could be a bad signal or a good signal decrease can also be good or bad signal but share repurchase is normally a good signal okay when the company increases dividend it is a good signal that the company has is profitable it is a bad signal that the company has no growth when the when it is a negative decrease in the dividend uh, it's a bad signal that the company is not profitable but it's a good signal that the company has growth right but uh, but the company has to have uh, a dividend smoothing dividend smoothing actually is a way of keeping the dividend rate constant so that the investor expectations are not disturbed right while there is no need to do the uh, smoothing for the share repurchase because they are not common so again this picture is the same that we just discussed in the start so no need to look at again next topic is payout versus retention of cash so previously we looked at um, dividend versus share repurchase and we looked that it that it does not affect the initial value of the firm next we need to see whether paying or not paying dividend paying or retaining the dividend has any effect on the initial value of the firm or not and we call it as mm payout irrelevance we consider that it is also irrelevant but in a perfect capital market in a perfect capital market if a firm invest excess cash flow in financial securities the firm choice of payout versus retention is irrelevant and does not affect the initial value of the firm okay so if a company after we get earning after tax if the company pays dividend or it retains any decision has no any of the decision has no effect on the initial value of the share okay share price is actually not affected okay payout decision in a perfect capital market this is just an example let me see okay <clears throat> Burston Mining has 100,000 in excess cash. So company is considering investing the cash in one year T bill paying dollar paying 2% interest. So company can do that. And then using the cash to pay a dividend next year. Okay. So this is situation here. Company currently has 100,000 and company wants to, wants to pay dividend here. Right. So company can invest this at a rate of 2% so that company can pay dividend here so this is a dividend payout decision dividend payout decision so company wants to pay dividend okay and alternatively what company can do <coughs> so in this case company has not paid dividend sorry 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 this in this case company has not paid dividend now in fact company has invested the money excess cash right okay alternatively company does not want to invest company wants to pay this excess cash as dividend so this 100,000 would be the dividend and let's see if the okay a dividend, 
Alternately, the firm can pay a dividend immediately and shareholders can invest the cash on their own. Okay, in a perfect capital market, which option will shareholder prefer? Both options should be fine because if you see if person retains the cash, I mean does not pay dividend now, it will invest and at the end of next year, this would increase to 1 or 2000, right? Uh, 1 lakh and 2000. In other words, the present value of this future dividend is exactly 100,000, which is the same as the 100,000 shareholders will receive from an immediate dividend. So the company can pay 100,000 now or it can pay 1 or 2000 after one year. So it's, it's, it's exactly the same thing. Get now less or in other words, maybe they would be receiving 1.2 but now they are receiving 1. So this extra 20% is actually due to the investment rate. So money today is, is actually equal to the monies tomorrow when we bring it to today. Okay. So that's why in this slide, the question is actually helping you to understand when the company pays dividend now, the investor will receive this or if the company wants does not does not want to pay it and wants to retain it, it will pay at the end of one year. So it's the same thing. Okay. Thus the shareholders are indifferent about whether the firm pays the dividend immediately or retain the cash. Okay. So payout versus retention of cash and then retaining cash with imperfect capital with imperfect capital market when we are actually retaining. Okay. So what are the disadvantages when we, the company is retaining cash cash can be thought of as equivalent to negative leverage. So the tax advantage of leverage implies a tax advantage to holding cash. So let me explain that. So it means if you see that. When the company holds cash, when the company is retaining cash, it is earning some interest rate, right? Interest rate is an earning for the company. So when a company earns an extra financial income, so there will be a tax, right? So when a company holds tax, it will earn some interest rate and on the interest company will pay some taxes, right? So that's why if a company holds uh, holds uh, cash so it has to pay tax so there is a tax disadvantage of holding the cash okay another thing is when a company takes when a manager holds more cash the manager may uh, misuse the excess cash right so <clears throat> so it can the manager can use for its own perks right and luxurious uh, lifestyle the managers can use that so it would be a agency cost right there could be agency cost of holding the excess cash because managers can manipulate that okay so these are the two disadvantages so what are the advantages when the company holds more cash so it can minimize the transaction cost of raising new capital so when a company wants investment and the company has some excess cash already retaining it so the company can use this retained earning uh, for the investment purpose so company does not need to borrow from the bank or can does not need to issue the equity okay so company may avoid the or minimize the transaction cost of raising external financing so this is internal financing so company can reduce the cost of external financing okay and it So this avoid financial distress cost mean when a company wants to issue stocks okay uh, then let's say comp when the company is risky they will maybe require 18% to 20% right so this increase in 2% is cost of financial distress so the company may reduce this cost of financial distress if company can use its own internal funds so that is actually a simple concept. So this is just an extra example. So we are actually following the previous example. Suppose the company must pay corporate taxes at a 35% rate on the interest that it will earn. So 2% was the interest rate. Okay. Would pension fund investors. So remember the pension fund people. 
they prefer more dividends right because they actually need to uh, meet the requirements of uh, different pension holders prefer that Barton use its excess cash to pay dividends so they are preferring the company to pay dividend while the company is retaining it so <clears throat> okay would pension fund investor prefer that Barton uses its excess cash to pay dividend immediately or retain the cash for one year so let's see whichever approach is good for them okay pension funds they do not really pay taxes on their investment income okay but the corporations they pay because the pension fund managers do not pay taxes on the investment income the result from the prior example still hold okay they would get how much 100,000 invested and earn 2 percent to receive a total of 1 or 2,000 in one year okay if they receive 100,000 just now so if the pension holders they receive 100,000 dividend just now so after getting this one they will invest it and invest it at the rate of 2 percent and the pension holders will receive how much 1 or 2,000 in one year if the company retains the cash and does not pay the dividend then it will earn an after-tax returner uh, so 2% would be the return but the company for the company this return is a uh, income so they will have to pay this much tax so it means company is earning how much 1.3% okay so 100,000 into 1.013% so this would be at the end of year 1 so this would be distributed at the end of one year but if the pension fund however on the other hand pension fund holders can get this much okay so which approach is good for the pension fund holders of course the first one because they will prefer the first one because they are getting higher return right so when a company is keeping cash they have to pay some taxes and the pension fund holder will not be happy if they receive this much so they would prefer cash now okay this is the end of the today's lecture so let's do the mind mapping for this chapter okay students this is uh, just a little mind mapping so as we know that board of directors they decide whether to pay dividend or retain dividend and they pay dividend and then we have to see whether the dividend payout is in a perfect capital market or imperfect capital market when we have a perfect capital market so if we pay the cash and dividend so cash sorry it should be dividend okay so when we say dividend it should be cash dividend or stock dividend so in this case uh, the price of the share would decrease the price would decrease but if the company is doing share repurchase so price does not change and number of shares would increase so here in this case uh, when the company is paying cash the number of shares would remain constant while if the company is doing stock dividend of course the you know, share would also increase right so when the company issues stock to pay dividend number of stock would increase and then high dividend we can borrow or we can issue equity so price does not change in any other form so when the price does not change we call it as mm irrelevance but on the other side when there are market imperfections first imperfection is tax so tax has an effect on the dividend policy because of the tax effect the wealth of the people or the price is actually affected right and uh, when there is information asymmetry so it may also affect the uh, share price because higher the information asymmetry higher would be the risk when higher is the risk then higher would be the required rate of return when higher is the required rate of return lower is the price okay so please remember this thing so when there is information asymmetry in investors they don't know much about the company so it means risk is higher risk is higher required rate of return is higher required rate of return is higher price is lower okay 
so information asymmetry may affect the price okay so in that case dividend becomes relevant and dividends can be used as a signal signal to reduce this risk so risk can be reduced required rate of return can be reduced price can be improved okay so that's all from today's lecture thank you so much